Hello everyone and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Did you miss me? Cause it has been a while. Sorry about that. But I've just come from a screening of this week's big release, Deadpool 2. And uh, I have some thoughts. Just a quick reminder before we get started that if you like this video or any of my other videos, there's a whole lot more where that came from. So simply click the icon right down there to visit the channel and be sure to hit that subscribe button right in the cojones. Also, <coughs> don't forget to click the thumbs up icon below and to leave your spoiler free thoughts in the comments as well. Now, on with the show! I had the opportunity tonight to see a double feature of both Deadpool movies back to back, and I was very grateful for the experience. Not only did it serve as a refresher for all of the backstory and running gags that would carry over to the sequel, but it illustrated in perfect clarity just how little has changed from film to film. Watching them sequentially like that really reinforces how similar the two films are in their rhythms and their tone. So, Deadpool fans, relax! Even though director Tim Miller was very publicly replaced by John Wick co-director David Leitch, don't worry, not much has changed. In fact, that is both the best thing I can say about Deadpool 2 and the worst. It's the same as the first. Not better, not worse, it's not bigger and it doesn't grow the mythology in new or exciting ways the way that some sequels do. It's just the same, the same old irreverent, self-aware, snarky, hyper-violent junk food that you got last time, just without the element of surprise. We all know what's coming now, we expect it to be good bloody fun, and but for a few issues, that's exactly what we get. Nothing is taken seriously in Deadpool 2, all wounds heal pretty easily, violence is a punchline, and nothing that happens really ultimately means anything at all. Now, the first Deadpool announced itself as a love story masquerading as a superhero movie. This one has a similar tack. Deadpool himself tells us, the audience, at the very beginning that this film is actually a family film. Well, I'll tell you, the love story works better. Don't get me wrong, Morena Bakarin is still here as Deadpool's dream girl, and their passion still leaps off the screen as it did before, but the focus here is more on a ragtag group of pals and frenemies that Deadpool assembles to, uh, uh, accomplish some stuff. I, I, I really don't want to get into spoilers here. So the most I will say about the plot is that unlike the first film's love story at the center, which really complemented the action, the attempts to inject heart into this film and a sense of morality, well, they don't work quite as well with a character that is as gleefully, homicidally apathetic as Deadpool is. They probably have done better by sticking to the cartoonish nature of the world they've created, and they do get around to that by the film's ending, which of course extends into the mid-credits scenes that you absolutely positively should not skip. But once again, by the time you get to that ending and those post credit scenes, you really get the sense that nothing that happens really means anything. And the movie just sort of floats away on a layer of fluff. There's no real weight to the conclusion of the story, and there really should be. And if I get the sense that there should be more weight to it, perhaps that's just some of the residual after effects of having seen Avengers Infinity War two weeks prior. That's as far as I'll go describing the plot, so all that's left to talk about is a, a few minor bits. Let's talk about the characters, okay? Ryan Reynolds here, who again co-produces, and this time co-wrote the script, really owns the Deadpool character by now, and the success of the first film has done nothing to lessen the bite of his witty repartee. We see some more familiar faces from the first film and some fresh new characters. The standout here is Domino, whose superpower is simply luck. And, and it doesn't sound very exciting, but, but I'll be damned if that hasn't shot to the top of my list when it, whenever someone asked me what superpower I would wish for if I could only have one. Well, yeah, I think I might go with Domino's. Now I get the feeling I, I kind of want some pizza. Don't know why. I gotta say, for all the hype about Josh Brolin's time-traveling cyborg assassin character Cable, I was kind of disappointed by how little he was developed, and how little impact he made on my enjoyment of the film. Uh, ditto for this kid Russell, this, this main character, he plays a pivotal role in the plot, but he just didn't quite work for me. Like, he really seemed like a little whiny douchebag. Douchebag. He had no real impact on the plot, and I get the feeling that he was supposed to. Maybe that's the best way to sum it all up for a franchise whose hero has a catchphrase of MAXIMUM EFFORT. Deadpool 2 seems like it's just sort of going through the motions, even though those motions include enough punchlines and, well, punches of all kinds to give faithful fans their money's worth for sure. 
I award Deadpool 2 a grudging large bag of popcorn. At the end of the day, it gives fans of the original exactly what they want. Nothing more. Nothing more.